Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalam ala Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Ruhi Khan and I'm a high school sophomore at New York Charter High School. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a paragon for spiritual life in Islam. However, his spirituality precedes his reception of the first revelation from Allah. Even before he became the messenger of Allah, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a man of God. Muhammad's peace be upon him's life as a prophet began when he was only 40 years old. Hadiths from his pre-Islamic life are not commonly known, but they are still indicative of Muhammad, peace be upon him's goodness of the heart and thoughtfulness, showing how even before he was introduced to Allah's direct guidance, he was following the path to Allah. Muhammad received revelations that spoke the direct words of God, but his whole being as a messenger of God reveals messages from Allah that are conveyed through his actions. The integrity of these actions before the revelations prove why he was chosen as messenger of Allah to all of humanity. When Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was only a child, he was recognized as exceptional and many members of the clan believed he would become the leader. He had a somewhat unique aura that set him aside from others of the tribe. According to Muslim traditions, the Hunafa, or believers of one God, all were waiting for the arrival of a new prophet. Muhammad, peace be upon him, was that said prophet. However, he was discovered when he was 12, not 40. His uncle Ab Abu Talib invited the young boy in his merchant caravan. The Christian monk Bahira noticed a cloud following the caravan, shielding them from the blistering heat. He was intrigued. He invited all the travelers to share a meal with him, with him to observe the phenomena further. He noticed the young Muhammad had and took him aside to ask him a variety of questions about his social standing, family, background, his personal hopes, and his dreams. Finally, Bahira asked to see Muhammad, peace be upon him, his back. There, in between his two shoulder blades, he found Khatam an nabi the seal of prophethood, indicated by a skin growth. Only at the age of 12, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was protected by a miracle of a cloud, preventing the harsh rays of sun from harming him. Also, he bore a physical brand of prophethood. Muhammad was des destined to be in service of Allah almost 30 years before he was designated to be prophet. As Muhammad, peace be upon him, advanced to adulthood, he experienced the simple blessings of life, such as marriage, a stable career, and children. But even before becoming Allah's official messenger, his experiences were not the basic or average ones his contemporaries had had. He was known and always acknowledged for his virtuous character. He became a traitor. He built a reputation for not only being efficient, but honest, gaining him the title of Sadiq al-Min, meaning the truthful and the trustworthy. Khadija bint Khuwailid, one of the wealthiest traders of Mecca, heard of Sadiq al-Min and went, ventured to test the abilities of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by asking him to sell some of her goods in Syria. A loyal servant of hers, Marsara, was ordered to follow Muhammad, peace be upon him, and observe his attitude and behavior. The Prophet returned, doubling the expected profits. Mursara re relayed the information and exposed the Prophet as a man like no other, with overwhelming virtue and honesty. Khadija, a beautiful, wealthy woman of respectable lineage, recognized the exceptional traits of Muhammad, peace be upon him, alone, regardless of his social and economic differences, and proposed a marriage. Khadija recognized his virtuous abilities that made him the messenger of God before he was even dubbed the title. Muhammad, peace be upon him, had six children with Khadija, but he also had an adoptive son, Zayd. Zayd began a slave after being captured in battle and had had several masters before Khadija and then Muhammad. He'd been serving Muhammad for several years when he discovered his family was still alive. They came to Muhammad and requested to purchase Zayd back. Muhammad asked Zayed to make the decision himself. If he wanted to go with his family, he was free to without any compensation. But if he chose to stay, his family would have to accept his choice. Unexpectedly, Zayed preferred slavery, not because he enjoyed the service, but because he enjoyed serving Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Zayed also recognized the unique and honorable qualities Muhammad possessed and would much rather be in the presence of such a man than away. Directly after the moving decision, Muhammad immediately freed Zayd and publicly adopted him as his son. Now, Zayd ibn Muhammad had recognized the remarkable traits of Muhammad and made a decision that would affect him for the rest of his life that he knew he would not regret. 
an important episode in his life before prophethood also has great implications for American Muslims. There was a merchant who came to perform a pilgrimage to Mecca and subsequently was robbed of all of his possessions. He turned to many for help, but received no aid from anyone. Several leaders, including Muhammad peace be upon him of Mecca, had heard of his plight, and they were shocked not only to hear what had occurred, but also that no one was willing to help him. The well-meaning leaders collaborated in what they called Hilf al-Fadul, or a pact of the virtuous, with three different creeds. No, the first creed was, no person shall be subjected to persecution regardless of whether he or she is a native of Mecca or an outsider. Number two, from now on, there'll be no opportunities for cruelty to occur. And number three, we will push for the rights of the downtrodden until they are obtained. Later in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him's life, he, was set, he said that if he once again were invited to join such a league, he, now as a prophet of Islam, would. The significance of such an allegiance is monumental. First, it shows how Muhammad, as a founding member and among others, took initiative to improve Mecca's living conditions. Next, it shows the values of rights being defined in a time they were looked over. And it also shows the acceptance of non-Muslims and that together, non-Muslims and Muslims can collaborate to make something great. The pact vows to protect the rights and prevent oppression of people regardless of their religion or where they are from, something our world has little trouble doing. This pact was marvelous on so many levels and the American Muslims of today can learn a lot from it. We should not feel afraid or reluctant to join organizations or groups to help protect, protect the civil liberties of others and ourselves. Overall, Muhammad peace be upon him has always followed a path of righteousness without ever being told to do so. His whole life, he was recognized by Muslims and non-Muslims alike for his unique and wonderful beliefs in being a good person. His graciousness made him the man who became the messenger of Allah in the, in the way of his words as well as in the way of his actions. Muhammad is an epitome for not only Muslims, but shows how he connects to non-Muslims and how as a messenger of God, Allah shows what he expects out of humanity by pointedly telling it through the Quran, but also through the Hadith of Muhammad, peace be upon him, that show righteousness in action. Muhammad was an exceptional individual, and his whole life and all of his interactions and choices are a model for humanity. Before I go, I wanted to say thank you for this opportunity to speak. It was gratifying and interesting to learn more about my prophet. And it's also a special day for me, and I feel like I have a special connection with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I was also born on, um, on Maulid 16 Hijri years ago. But um, thank you again, and Maulid Mubarak.